Aloha, everybody. Mike Drutar, principal broker and owner of Next Home Paradise Realty, bringing you your November 2021 market report. I'm going to do something a little different this time. As you can probably see, you're not seeing me. You're seeing some wonderful scenes from here across the island. My thought was that maybe you guys would like to have this going on in the background. You can listen to the report. And then maybe if you want to just have this as sort of a screensaver on your TV, you can have that and just turn me down so no one has to listen to it and you have a nice little screensaver of videos of Hawaii going on in the background. Thought that might be nice for you guys. Let me know what you think if you'd like this or if you like kind of the other setup better. Happy to go back to that. We're going to look at the November data and we're also going to take a look at where we're slotting in at this point in the year. We only have a month left uh, to look at this data and it's been a pretty incredible 2021. You know, things were really picking up quite a bit at the end of 2020. Uh, I don't know that we all expected this bull run to kind of go this long and really show very little signs of letting up. Uh, let's get right into it. Uh, starting in North Kona, we're going to look first at the median price. For the month of November, it was $840,000. That's actually down $10,000 from November of last year. Uh, the median price for a condo was $447,500. That is up $60,000 from last year. Up in South Kohala, the residential median price was $865,000. So this is one of those rare months where the houses in South Kohala were more than the houses in North Kona. That $865,000 represented an increase of $222,500. Pretty substantial movement there. The median price for a condominium was $790,000. That was up $61,778. We can look over at the end of year data to kind of see where we were at this point last year versus where we are at this point now. Uh, in terms of median price, the residential median price in North Kona year to date is $925,000. That's up 20% over last year. The median price for a condo was $409,000 so far this year. That's an increase of 10.5% over last year. The median price for a house in South Kohala so far this year, $825,000, an increase of $160,000, 24.06% increase there. And for condos, $780,000 is the median price so far this year, an increase of 26.83%. So we're seeing over 20% gains in median prices for houses in Kona, houses in Kohala, and condos in Kohala. And about half that, about 10% for condos in Kona. And I think the reason for that is that the condos in Kona, much fewer of the uh, vacation rental type of condos and a lot more of the residential condos. So big difference there. Looking up at the unit sold, North Kona, we're seeing that the inventory is really dragging this market down. We had 45 sales of houses last month in North Kona. That's compared to 71 at the same time last year. 38 condos sold was the exact same as November of last year. But remember, in November of last year, we were just starting to open up some tourism again. So we didn't see quite the demand and we didn't see the units sold happening there. Now, short-term vacation rental eligible condos are probably the hottest commodity on the market right now. Most of those that you see listed will get many offers, will go over list price even when you overlist it. It's been really interesting to see. Uh, houses in South Kohala, 23 sales in November compared to 23, I'm sorry, compared to 22 in November of last year, and 27 condos sold compared to 33 last year. In terms of year-to-date data, we're still up pretty much in uh, every category. Uh, we've had 627 houses sold so far this year, that compared to 537 last year. That's in North Kona. Uh, 597 condos compared to 348 at this time last year. And up in South Kohala, 287 houses sold compared to 245 last year. And 392 condos sold compared to 237 last year. So we're seeing bigger numbers in terms of units sold on the year as a whole. So we're seeing a lot fewer sales for the most part on a per month basis. And what's the reason for that? Well, we have very tight inventory right now. 
And that's meaning that we just don't have enough properties to sell. And we don't have as many closings. But we're still up for the year. Why is that? Well, remember, during the months of April, May, June, July, and August, we really had very, very few closings last year in 2020. So that number is going to be skewed. So while it looks really good with 17 16% gains uh, in some markets, and the condo markets, both those gains are over 60% in terms of units sold. Uh, a little bit of that, don't don't take that to mean that the market is quite that hot. It's just last year's market for those houses and condos was so cold that this year's numbers look even better. We're going to talk about a couple uh, articles in the news right now. And these are things that you want to keep an eye on uh, to see where things are going. Now, most of the time we're looking at these articles, we're looking at data that's going to be used that is throughout the entire country for the most part. So sometimes you'll see real estate news and real estate data that won't really apply to our market here in Hawaii. And it's important to look at where they're looking at, what data points they're seeing. Are they talking about big cities? Are they talking about suburbs and things like that? It's important to note that here on Hawaii Island, we have not created any new supply in the last 15 years. And so as more and more people are moving over here, we can't meet that demand and we're seeing prices go up quite a bit. Here's a, I have an article and I'll link to this down in the description below uh, on CNBC, uh, where an investment advisor is talking about how hard assets like real estate are where they want to invest. Now, I'll also have a tag up in the corner right now that links to my other video that's going to talk about how real estate is such a great hedge against inflation. Traditionally, people are going to want to invest in hard assets like real estate when we are in an inflationary cycle. And this basically tells me that a lot of people who know what's going to happen in the market are realizing that this inflationary cycle we're in is more than just a transitory uh, period of time. Uh, there was a couple schools of thought for a while that said, yeah, we have inflation, but this is just a short term thing. Everything's going to get worked out within six to 12 months and we're going to be fine. It's starting to look like that's not the case because inflation is continuing to rise and it is not ebbing off at all. We're going to start seeing the Fed, I think, here pretty soon, start taking some action on this. And they're going to use the one tool they have in their bag to cool inflation, that is to raise interest rates. That's going to be really interesting because when they raise those interest rates, that also will raise the mortgage rate that you can borrow uh, when you buy a home. And while this market is very strongly cash oriented, that is still going to have a cooling effect on the market. The second article that I'm going to link to talks about what some people think is going to happen next year in 2022. You know, I like to look at this it, with, with a little bit of a, uh, you know, a sense of cynicism, I guess, because uh, I remember what we were reading back at the start of 2020. And boy, things can change and your predictions can just go totally away. But one person thinks that we're going to see an increase in prices in the big cities as people feel more comfortable returning back to the big cities. Uh, there's been a lot of movement out of big cities to resort areas, uh, to suburbs, to things like that. And uh, they're predicting that it could go back into the big cities. That'll be interesting. I am hearing about some companies saying, hey, we're going to be coming back to work now. And I do know people here in Hawaii who've been teleworking, remote working back on the mainland who are getting called back in that they're going to be working in an office environment uh, again pretty soon. So that is starting to happen. Uh, another prediction, the rate at which home values are appreciating could slow down. Now, I think this is probably also true. Not to me, not to say that this market's really cooling off or anything like that, but it's really tough to keep up with these 20% gains like we talked about earlier. I can't imagine that continuing at this point because prices are just so high. So you could still have 8 and 10 and 12% gains. That's still a, still a very, very strong market, though it would be cooler than this year. So while, they, while you might see prices go down, I don't expect them to go down a lot. Um, they'll only go down in a few areas here and there. Mainly what's going to happen is deceleration of this hot market, not so much prices going down. Uh, number three, mortgage rates could be on the rise. I really do believe this, and I know we've been talking about mortgage rates going up for a while uh, now, but it just can't stay this low. And with inflation so 
evident. I just can't see mortgage rates staying this low. There's going to come a point where they have to really move up. Next prediction, inventory will likely still be low. 100% agree with that. Uh, I still can't find people here in Hawaii in particular to sell properties because if you sell here, if you live here, then you have to go move somewhere else or else you're stuck trying to buy here in this really tight market. So the only th people who are really selling are people who own properties here on the mainland. So they live on the mainland, they own a property here, it's easy to sell, they don't have to go find somewhere to live. Predominantly, that's where our market is. And the people generally buying are also from the mainland. So this great exchange that we've been seeing of money for properties is mostly mainland buyers transacting with mainland sellers. So that's something to be aware of. And then finally, the third article is Hawaii specific. It was really interesting to read this. It's from Bloomberg, and it says a boom in housing prices helps Hawaii more than any other state. Wow, well, that sounds really good. It helps Hawaii more than anywhere. Well, you get into the article, and what it's really saying is because our prices have gone up, your local governments are going to reap the rewards in increased property taxes. So uh, if you already live here or own here, that's not necessarily great news. Uh, but we are seeing pretty incredible price increases. You're going to see higher property tax assessments. Uh, here in Hawaii County, I have another article about this. Uh, here in Hawaii County, property tax assessments are based on the property value on January 1st. And the property value on January 1st takes into account what happened in the previous year. So we're seeing that we have 20% increase over the previous year. It stands to reason that assessments are going to be somewhere around 20%, 16% higher. Now, they don't like to overassess because they don't want to deal with appeals. So, generally speaking, we have much lower property tax assessed value than true market value. However, no one likes to increase taxes. So, the way that you get more tax revenue is to increase the assessed value. So they can sit there and say, hey, we didn't increase taxes, even though the number of dollars that you spend on taxes uh, have gone up for the property taxes. One thing that's really good here in Hawaii County, though, is that our property taxes, there's two different tax classes. There's the investor tax class and there's the homeowner tax class. Now, there's actually a handful of others, but those are the two predominant ones that you see. If you are living in your property 200 days a year or more, you qualify for this to be your primary residence, and your tax will end up being about half. Now, there's other things that you have to take into account, like your age, and some people with disabilities can get even more of a property tax break. But generally speaking, you're going to pay around half of what you would pay if it was a property that you owned as an investment. So, important to remember, if you have the ability, if you qualify by living here on Hawaii Island for 200 days a year, you want to get your property tax home exemption form filled out and turned in by December 31st. If you don't have it done by then, you're going to be automatically in that higher tax rate for at least the next, the first six months of the tax year. And you know this is going to be thousands and thousands of dollars for some folks. So that's really important. If you qualify for that, you definitely, definitely want to take advantage of it. And why do we tax so much higher for the people who are investors here and so much lower for the people who live and work here? Well, it's really simple. The people who live and work here also vote here. So they're going to tax the people who don't get the chance to vote, but the people who are going to vote, well, we want to keep them happy, so we're going to give them lower property taxes. And that's just how it works here in Hawaii and on Hawaii Island. All right, I hope this has been helpful for you. Let me know if you like this new format of me not being on the screen and you having these wonderful videos of property here in Hawaii. I look forward to hearing your comments. Click like and subscribe. I'll see you again real soon.